Well, I have three kids. <laughs> that's not normally the first half hour back home, but that's what you're doing right now. Yeah, you know, how you guys doing? Just got back from the hospital. We had a, a beautiful little baby girl, and she's feeding, and I'm like, I'm going to go step in the other room and just make a call real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Congratulations, Congratulations. Man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We are unbelievably blessed. We have a uh, beautiful little baby girl. Her name is Kennedy Eloise, and uh, we're over the moon. Unbelievable. Kennedy Contos? That's, that's a yeah. great that's name. That's a name that's right a, there. That's yeah, a big some, league. Uh, got, some, got some sting to it. Ooh. Big league name, big league name. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to pry here, but like, have you been sleeping at the hospital the last couple of nights? Oh no, you know, my uh, to to keep it very brief, uh, my wife went into labor on Monday night about nine thirty, and she labored for about thirty three hours, oh. and then we spent we spent, we had the baby yesterday morning at about four thirty. We spent one night in the hospital, and the the nurse on duty came in when we got transferred to postpartum. And she's like, oh, you know, maybe you guys will leave Friday or Saturday morning. I'm like, we're out of here as soon as we can. So let's get this show on the road. <laughs> so you guys are home now, George? Yeah, yeah. We're, we, we just walked in the door about two hours ago. Uh, the baby passed all the tests. Everything's great. Mama's doing awesome. And even her, she was like, we got to get out of here and go home. And luckily, we live eight minutes away from the hospital where we delivered. So it wasn't a very far commute. But we're thrilled to be home and thrilled to have the, uh, the unbelievable new addition to our family. Dude, I, I, I don't know how you drove home, but when Junior was in the I mean, I've never driven more safe in my life. I was driving like 35 four miles an hour, four yeah. miles an hour, <laughs> hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel, blinker on. I, I was paranoid driving home from the hospital. Yeah, no, it was uh, driving through rush hour, Chicago, Michigan Avenue to get back here was was interesting. So you can't go that fast anyways, but. I was definitely very abrupt in my uh, <laughs> putting the signal on about five minutes too soon and doing all the things that all new dads do. I love it. You're leaving the hospital. You come up to a speed bump and you're just like, nope, I'm stopping. We're just going to get out of the car right here. We're not going <laughs> over a speed bump. Um, George Contos, congratulations with us here, Withered and FP on uh, 95.7 The Game. Oh, oh, okay, George, um, this is probably a nice little respite for you after your week. Let's talk a little Giants baseball and, and just hang out on that a little bit. Like, what's your, what's your, and maybe it didn't change at all, but what is your perception of Farhan Zaidi in the front office now as opposed to where it was six months ago? Well, look, I think that there's there you have to give credit where credit's due, obviously, and, and you know, regardless of what the circumstances are, they've put together a team that's going to go into opening day that looks really good on paper, and that looks like they can go out there and make some noise with the addition of Solaire and Chapman. And, you know, just a few days ago, you get you get the reigning Cy Young winner to go co-aced with our guy who finished second in the Cy Young in Logan Webb. I, I think we look really good. We look really competitive. And, um, you know, I, I, it's also nice to see the star-studded free agent that the Dodgers signed struggle a little bit in his major league <laughs> debut. As a guy, George, that won two World Series, it was an integral part of both of them. Do you see any similarities between the, the way the roster is constructed right now and maybe one of your World Series teams with the pitching and the defense and the direction that they went in the offseason? Well, you know, FP, you know how, how important it is to have pitching and good defense. Um, and they add, they added, obviously, some, some really nice pieces to the rotation, um, Blake Snell being the guy that front lines it. But, you know, Farhan made some sneaky moves in acquiring Robbie Ray, Another guy who won a Cy Young who won't be ready quite yet, but that rotation has a has an opportunity to be really, really good, and that is one heck of a good similarity to our teams that we had in 10 and, you know, my two that I was on in 12 and 14. The bullpen's going to be the bullpen. We always had a little bit of a, a misfit group. Camilo Doval is is obviously the, the big guy, throws really hard. He He's kind of the guy at the back of the end of that bullpen with, you know, Brian Wilson types earlier in my tenure with the Giants, and you have some guys that you kind of piece it together with which was what we did, and four of those guys happened to be the core four. They were there for forever, part of all three rings, and they uh, they don't win those World Series without those guys. But it's kind of just piecing together who's going to get the ball, who's going to do it in what situation, and they have that same kind of look. And the one difference is, is offensively, they look like they have some thump in that lineup now. You look in the middle of it, and you see guys like Solaire, and you see guys like Chapman, guys who, uh, Conforto, you have, you have a lineup that can go out there and really make some noise. But I still believe... That pitching and defense defense is going to be what wins it. And if these guys can go out and score four, five, six runs a game, I think it's going to be that much more fun to watch. Your take, and George Contos joining us right now, your take on the difference that Bob Melvin will make. 
Well, look, I think that uh, Bob Melvin is a guy that I, I'm never going to compare him to, to Bruce Bochy because I didn't play for him and I don't know him very well other than in passing. Um, but he's a guy that has some old school feel and everything that I've ever heard of, of him is he's a player's guy. And we had that with Boach and obviously, you know, that time passed. And then we went to Gabe and, and his style of running the, the ball club, which was a little bit more analytical, a little bit of um, more of letting the guys be who they are themselves, not much communication. And I think Bob Melvin come over here. We've seen him across the Bay for a long time. We know what we're expecting. He's a guy that players love to play for. He's an old school guy, played for the Giants. He's, you know, been across the Bay as well. And, and you kind of know what you're getting. And he's got, he's bringing back a little bit more of that old school feel of, you know, we're going to have a great clubhouse. I have an open door policy to come in here with great communication. He's a good leader of men. He uses his eyes as his first line of defense when he's making decisions while taking the numbers and the analytics very seriously as well. So I think that uh, the guys are going to love playing for him. I know that already. And it's just um, hopefully they can put it all together and kind of get back on the right track. George, I think it gets me more upset than before the season starts anointing somebody champion of a division. And nothing gets me more upset than when people say, well, if we just get in the wild card. Like, this is a good baseball team, the way they're set up right now. Obviously, you got to go out there and play, and, and that's going to determine everything. But like, in your opinion, do you think that the way the Giants roster has been assembled in the offseason, on paper right now, that they can compete with the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks and the Padres in this division? Yeah, you know, I absolutely do. I, th I think if you look at what the... The, and I'm saying this using air quotes on the other side of the phone, but what the experts say or the people in Vegas are about over-unders and wins and losses, then we shouldn't even play the season. We should just, you know, go right to just giving somebody a trophy. you got to go in between the white lines, and then you have to go get it, get it done. And I think that the Giants absolutely have a team to go out there and compete with anybody. I think the NL West is probably the best division in baseball. I mean, the NL East is going to be really good um, and fun to watch as well. But, I mean, this, this division, you have four teams – that are going to be potentially really good and on paper are really good, but you got to go out there and you got to play the games and, and you got to kind of see where the chips fall after nine innings. Uh, George, I, I'm wondering with, with the last few days you've had, if you even have any idea what's going on with Shohei Otani right now, do, <laughs> do you even know? Well, you know what? The one thing that is good when you are getting no sleep because you're you're <laughs> watching this new baby that's alive for six hours and you're making sure every breath their <laughs> chest is going up and down, uh, you get to check the news in Twitter or X and you get to see that uh, you know all sorts of weird things are going on with uh, with Shohei Otani and some gambling allegations and all sorts of weird stuff. So yeah, I've I've been paying attention a little bit. All right, and what's your take on what you've read? I'll tell you what, it, it all sounds a little fishy um, with, with all this stuff going on. Um, you know, I haven't gotten into too much detail, but I, I have read that the, the translator has racked up a four and a half million dollar gambling uh, uh, debt with a bookie or something. And it all just sounds a little, uh, I don't have all the information, but it all sounds a little fishy. George, you're, you're in, he's a financial guy, by the way. Yep. I, 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 if you're a financial guy, is there a way that I can steal $4.5 million out of somebody's account? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is a glaring accounting uh, flaw at the end of the day. When, when the checks and balances, credits and debits don't quite match up, it, uh, it, it looks a little, I mean, four and a half million bucks is, is you know, it's a lot to, uh, to do. But uh, from what I have read, it looks like they're going to do some more diving into it because I, the one thing that I did read was, I can't remember who it was, but someone said something isn't quite adding up here with the story. So I'm, I'm sure they will go down that rabbit hole. Um, and it's unfortunate, whatever it is, because, uh, you know, show, everything surrounding Shohei has been so squeaky clean and so fantastic. And regardless of the Dodger thing or this and that, you want to root for guys who are really good baseball players, who are good for the game, good for the community, and, um, you know, good role models and guys who are easy to root for because it's good for baseball. And when you have stuff like this, you know, coming up, it's just unfortunate that uh, we got to go through it. George, talking to a lot of getting back to the Giants for a second, talking to a lot of the relievers last year and some of the pitchers, they were all kind of curious to what their role would be when they would pitch, when they wouldn't pitch, if they were going to open, if they were going to close, they were going to be a feature guy. It, it seems like based on what you said and what we've heard that with Bob Melvin, it's going to get back to more like baseball y in a sense where guys are going to know their roles. As a former reliever who usually knew your role. Talk about the importance of knowing when I'm going to come into a game, uh, who I'm going to face, and, and just like the routine and knowing your routine and knowing when you're going to be used. It's really important. I, I mean, you know, unless you're like the bona fide closer or eighth inning guy or, or whatever, 
you know, you know exactly when you're going in the game. But for me, the, the, the best part about it was, you know, when your situation or your role comes up. And I, and I knew from, from day one, when I got to the giants and I kind of established myself a little bit, I knew that I was coming in, in the, you know, fifth, sixth or seventh inning. And I would have traffic on base and I would get the ball to, you know, uh, Javi or Jeremy Affelt, who then got the ball to, you know, Romo or Casilla. And I, and we, I knew what that looked like. And I knew what my routine was. And I knew that when the phone rang at that time, obviously our bullpens were still in the dugout, which I know rags and Guardy absolutely hated, um, because the phone would ring and we'd have like six guys poking up like we're beavers popping out of a, uh, out of the wood stack looking <laughs> who's, who's, the, who's it going to be. Um, but it, you know, when, when the phone rang, I knew exactly what my, what my, um, role was, what my situation was going to be. And before Guardy even came, we'd have like the one or two guys who would, who it might be kind of already up there on the, on the last couple steps, ready to hear their name. And it was easy. And when you know when you're going to go in the game or what situation you're going to be put in, it makes it a lot easier to prepare for it. And when you're mentally prepared and you're mentally ready and nothing catches you off guard, you have a lot better chance of going out into a game into competition and having success george contos with us here on willard and dibs fp in for dibs george i wonder if you can speak to just uh the work that you've done around this team the fans you talk to what do you think this team i know it's only on paper right now will do for the connection between the team and the fan base um, I, I really hope that it, it, it kind of helps bridge whatever gap there seems to be right now, because the one thing that I've, that I pride, you know, being a part of San Francisco and being, um, on the giants was that fan connection. And we have the best fans in baseball. And I, and I, you know, I was fortunate enough to play for the Yankees. I played a few other places. Um, but there's no, nobody beats the fans in San Francisco, the guys who you're walking down the street and they'll walk with you, have a conversation about how well you're doing or how well the team's doing. And they just appreciate the work and the effort that is put in by all the players. And I think the last couple of years, there's been a little bit of a disconnect in that regard. And I think that the fans are the most important people um, in, in, in the, in the game. You know, I mean, we, we sold out 555 straight home games when I was in that streak and I was part of it. Every game I ever pitched at, at formerly AT&T park, there were 42 to 45,000 people in the stands and the fans are the most important part of the game. And I think that this team uh, can go a long way into um, getting the fans back excited about coming to the ballpark every day. George, congratulations again, man. I I, I, I got to imagine that uh, that that already in the other room, you're dying to get back over there just to <laughs> just to stare at the new baby. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll tell you. I tell you. I spent every time I, I've held her. She. You don't realize how small a <laughs> seven pound six ounce baby is, and I'm holding her like basically in one hand, and I'm just like looking at her with her head like right by my knees, leaning over on top of her, trying to measure every uh, inch of her face. Cause <laughs> the thing that everyone keeps telling me is that it goes by real fast, so I'm trying to take it all in. Um, what was it someone said to me years ago? Um, long days, short years. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Long yeah, yeah, days, yeah. short years. I, yeah. was, I was told... I was told that yesterday, actually. Long days, short years. Yeah, because, like, you know, tonight you're not going to be like, whoa, this is going by quick. Like, that's not what tonight's going to feel like. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Just tonight, tonight, I'm running on absolute fumes and adrenaline right now. <laughs> and I think the, the little cat naps that I'm going to get for probably an hour and ten minutes or two hours, whatever they may be, are going to be very welcomed. Uh, enjoy it, and congratulations on doing this kind of work to have a baby come home right as March Madness is starting. Boy, oh yeah, I, that, I, I could I could be in the uh, I could be in the uh, recovery room watching it on that little TV. You know, you gotta gotta get home and get yourself situated and comfortable. <laughs> that is elite work, George. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. We look forward to talking to you throughout the year. Sounds good, guys. Thanks for having me.